There is a struggle for survival. Right? And survival is the biggest. The community will the community be possible, or you will only have individuals fighting with each other. Even the family is not possible, and that's what is happening, right? The most of the families are breaking into a smaller family, then nuclear family, right? And even the husband and wife are now fighting and you know, wanting to divorce. But that is where you would reach. If there is struggle for survival and survival the future, then both the husband and wife right, will struggle with each other. Right. And there will be survival of the future. Right. And that is what is happening. And that has already happened in the law, right. in America. Where this divorce is a very common thing. I was telling you about the trans appears that the average rate of divorce is 15 times. And now they have come up with an idea of living together. So they said, why get married and then get divorced and they spend, they take so much of time and they spend so much of money. Then don't get married. Just live together. <laughs> what an idea. No commitment. So now what will happen for the children? And I told you this joke that you know, the wife is shouting at the husband that look, your children and my children are beating our children. <laughs> so that is where you will reach. <laughs> And that's where, that's where we have almost reached in the name of development. So the community is not possible. With this belief that there is struggle for survival and there is survival is the test. So if you have this belief, then you will end up becoming an individual who is, who is fighting with everyone, struggling to survive. And as we go on, you know, further studying this, we will see there is harmony, there is coexistence, right? Everywhere in nature, in existence, right? Only when we understand this coexistence, understand this <coughs> harmony, right? And it becomes a part of our being, then only we can be in harmony, we can be in coexistence, we can be in relationship. Right? Not otherwise. So it is true that if we don't understand this coexistence, if we don't understand this harmony, right, then we'll have fear from other human beings. We will also have fear from the rest of nature. And that is what is happening. And today, instead of understanding this coexistence, this harmony, what we are trying to do is to promote this struggle, promote this contradiction. In fact, there are many theories in the West which say that contradiction is basic to human you know, society and of course you know, to nature and all the development or the growth in the human society takes place by way of this contradiction. So it is the contradiction which is leading to development. That's, that is one of the way of looking at human society. So if there is a contradiction, <coughs> the contradiction is going to lead to development, then you develop more and more contradiction. <coughs> So you keep suffering with the hope of development. So what you get is suffering, not the development. So 
this truth, this fearlessness, sounds a very simple word, right? But if you really dwell deeper into it, right, it would mean you know, understanding of the coexistence in existence, understanding of the harmony in nature. And having this feeling of coexistence, this harmony in your relationship with human being, with the rest of nature, right? with one and with all. Nothing less than this would do. So all this which we have written is the minimum requirement for you to be fearless. Right? This we will also write down from family order to world family order, that is universal human order. That is also a minimum requirement for you to be fearless. <coughs> Nothing short of this will do. Uh, related to what Guru said about competition mm -hmm. being the uh, one 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 uh, uh, thought uh, or philosophy being like uh, competition being the uh, process where development takes place. I was also thinking like uh, uh, we in uh, in order to understand love, we need to understand hatred. What produces hatred in individual, in nation, in family, in society? Thank you. See, all these, you know, things we have come to believe that in order to understand health, you must fall sick. <laughs> Can we experience death in order to understand life? <laughs> These you know, very simple things, but we have somehow, you know, kind of accumulated it in us as belief, right? and we keep on propagating. So this idea that I can understand life, you know, I can understand the self, I can understand the body, right? I can understand this happiness of the self, I can understand the health of the body, right? All this can be understood directly rather than going round and round. So first, you don't understand health and you don't understand how to keep you know, your body in good health. Therefore, you are not able to do it. Therefore, your body gets sick. Right? Then you do a lot of study about the diseases and how to get rid of the diseases. Right? And then at the end of you, at the end of it, okay, you make your body healthy. <coughs> then it is a big achievement. We went all round and round. What is being said here is that we can simply try to understand the health of the body and how the body can be kept in good health and then do whatever is necessary to keep the body in good health. In fact, I remember in our Sanstan, uh, we had some you know, students and uh, one allopathic doctor I met, you know, so he was very you know, enthusiastic that, you know, can I do something for this son? So I said, ah, why not you come, you know, and tell our student about how to keep good health. Right. So this allopathic doctor is saying, no, 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 I can't be of any help. You will have to talk to some Ayurvedic or a naturopathic doctor, because they only talk about disease and how to get rid of the disease. We are not talking about health and how to keep yourself in good health. That's how the whole system of medicine has been developed. You know, allopathy has no concept of how to keep your body in good health. It has a concept of, in fact, the very beginning, you know, it starts from the diseases, you know, identification of diseases and how they can, you know, you can you know, take, take care of this diseases, or cure these diseases. If you look at Ayurveda, for example, it starts with what is Ayu? That's the meaning of Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. So, what is your Ayu? Ayu means the age, your health. So, what is this health? You know, what are the specifications of this health? 
right? then how you can ensure good health. Right? So a lot of discussions is regarding the health and how you can keep you know uh, health in your body. And then he says that when you know, despite all your efforts, if something has gone wrong, then how do you identify the disease? How do you take care of it? You know, and all that. So the whole approach today we have is to start with the problem. First, because of lack of understanding, let there be problem. When there are problems and you are dissatisfied with it, you are troubled by it, then start thinking of how to get rid of the problem. So when you are trying to get rid of this problem or any particular problem, by that time you are creating many more problems. So you have enough problem to solve. So we thought that there is lack of physical facility for the people. That is the problem. So we said, okay, let's go ahead, you know, develop technology to produce more and more. And we developed, you know, technologies to you know, produce more and more and make it available to the people. And today, you know, we have got into the problem of resource depletion, the problem of environment, right? And it has become more serious than our own existence. Now there is a lot of calculation <coughs> which is trying to say that you know the earth will not survive for many more years if you see the way we go around. Some people are saying 50 years, some people are saying 60 years, some 100 years, right? but not more than that. That documentary we saw you know, that. I'll be kind of. Huh? I'll be kind of. Uh, so I'll be kind of an inconvenient truth. Right? what we have done to the environment, to the nature. But that day also we saw that the kind of consumption pattern we have developed, it requires at least six, you know, five, six earth, okay, to support you. And fortunately or unfortunately we have only one earth. Right. So you try to solve the problem and you create many more problems, then you have many more problems to solve. Right, so you are busy with it. So what do you think? It is better to start with the solution or to start with the problem? <coughs> See, so as I can see, one plus one ka sare wrong answers khoj khoj ke usko eliminate karne ki koshish kar rahe ताकि कहीं ना कहीं से सही आंसर मिल जाए हमको उसका भी पक्का नहीं है कि वो सही है कि नहीं है इफ वी यस एस गुरुजी हैज सेड दैट इफ वी लैंड अप इन सॉल्विंग द प्रॉब्लम वन प्रॉब्लम एंड इट क्रिएट्स मेनी अदर प्रॉब्लम्स दैट इस हैपन when you do not understand the i think when we do not analyze and when we do not understand the right understanding that's the root cause of the problem if we go to the root cause of the problem then i think we will be able to solve the problem yeah so the root cause of the problem is the lack of solution or what you said, the lack of right understanding. So we have to start with right understanding. And then, if we have the right understanding, the life is very simple. We have to ensure living in relationship with human being. It means the happiness. And then we have to live with, in relationship with the rest of nature, ensuring mutual prosperity, mutual enrichment. That is all that is needed to be done. <coughs> Then the life will be simple. If we start with self, with right understanding, right understanding of the self, right understanding of the you know, body, coexistence, and right understanding about the relationship with human beings, then with, you know, in society, and finally in nature and existence. If that is how we start, then life will be simple. 
and that is what we are trying to do. And we also said that an all-encompassing solution is required. Not that you treat a part of it and then you start working with it. You need to understand it in totality, starting from individual right up to the That is what we have defined as you know, education and sanskar. Right understanding from self to entire existence. A sanskar is right living, you know, right from self to entire existence. The commitment, the preparation, the practice for ensuring this. When I uh, look into uh, the root cause of all the problems is the existence of the I. The existence of the deluded I. <laughs> <laughs> the I without life understanding. Okay. In fact, I must make it clear, yes. you know, I made it yesterday also, but let me repeat this. When we say I, it generally gives you the sense of ego. But we are not talking about ego. We are talking about the self. When the self has the right understanding, it gives rise to the self-confidence. It gives rise to understanding of the relationship, human being, the rest of nature. And all this will result, you know, what we are talking about. But if the self is not understanding itself, right, and is deluded, okay, by way of this preconditioning and by way of this sensation, you know, its desire, thought and expectations are decided, then what happens is you generally tend to either over-evaluate or under-evaluate. This over-evaluation is ego. This is creating problem. This under-evaluation is depression. This is also creating problem. Both of them are creating problem. So this self without right understanding about the self, you know, right, about the self to begin with, is creating problem. <coughs> this self without having the right understanding about the relationship with human beings is creating problem. The self without the right understanding of the relationship with the rest of nature is creating problem. So it is not the existence of the self which is creating problem. Okay. It is the existence of the self without right understanding. Yes. Okay. With wrong assumption is what is creating problem. So what is the solution? To have the self with right understanding which means to ensure right understanding in this self. If that happens, then we will have the self-confidence, confidence in this self. We will also have confidence in relationship with human being. We will also have confidence in, you know, in our relationship with the rest of nature. <coughs> so we will have the confidence in this self, in our relationship with human being, in our relationship with the rest of nature. That is, you know, having confidence in our relationship with the entire nature, human being and rest of it. If that happens, then I can live with this you know, happiness, prosperity, fearlessness and coexistence. So there is no problem anymore. If that does not happen and I go with any assumption, then I keep fluctuating between ego and depression. So, not only the ego is problem, depression is also a problem. Okay. And if you really look at it, you know, this depression causes more problem than the ego. Right. Because you have drawn your energy, right, and you are drawing the energy of others also. <coughs> so, ego of course creates problem, this depression creates more problem. And that is where we are fluctuating. So if you look at your graph, it goes like this. It does not stabilize. <coughs> what we are saying, that if we have the right understanding, this will stabilize here, right? <coughs> this is what we are trying to say right from the first day. That this right understanding is the first priority for you. 
If you remember, the very first session we asked you about the priority <coughs> among this right understanding, then right relationship, and particular facility. Even though you are not very clear about it, we still could make a sense that this is going to be the first priority. Now with so much of unfolding in the last five days, we can see what is the meaning of this first priority of light understanding. So the problem is all caused by you know, lack of light understanding. And if you remember then we are talking about the human being, about harmony between the self and the body. We said that recognition and fulfillment of the body is definite. Right? Recognition of this, recognition and fulfillment of the self depends on the assumption. If assumption has gone wrong, recognition and fulfillment will go wrong. So now if you look back and then see that in the nature, every unit has a definite conduct except human being. In human being also, <coughs> the body has a definite recognition and fulfillment. So the problem is only with the cell. The problem with this cell is that, you know, that knowing, you know, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling, you are operating with assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. That is the problem. And what is the solution? <coughs> to know, to understand. So if we have the right understanding, okay, we can ensure, you know, that our assumptions are correct and therefore recognition and fulfillment is correct. Therefore, we are living with definite conduct. So the problem is only with the self, not with the body. And the problem with the self is that I have come to assume things without knowing, without understanding. So all that I need to do is to have the right understanding. what it all you know, kind of boils down to. The right understanding in the self is the first priority for human being. If it is not there, I create trouble for myself, right? And I start creating trouble for everybody. Because if I start living with wrong assumptions, then my recognition and fulfillment, they go wrong. Therefore, I also keep troubling other people. I keep troubling the rest of nature. to fearlessness uh, and uh, especially when you have referred to with the rest of the nature. So actually I have a doubt on this uh, regard. When it comes to human being, uh, we can actually infuse trust uh, by knowing that everybody has the same intention. But uh, there is with the rest of the nature something that actually most Putinists fear uh, which is uh, with the evil spirit. and. Uh, so that's why many of us, when we go to a place which gives this easy uh, atmosphere, uh, we fear, even if we know that this is actually the best of the best or the most of the most peaceful places to live in. Yet we see, it, we feel that there is an evil spirit and we fear it. And uh, that is actually a cause of a problem even in my family also. Because especially when we go to, uh, when we go to my mother's place, uh, we have to go out when it is a little far away from the house. And in the middle of the night, especially in the winter, when my wife, wife uh, wakes me up and takes me outside to the toilet, it's very, very difficult to tolerate, but yet I have to accompany. So I am thinking about how we can overcome this fear, you know, it is beside human being with the evil spirit. And uh, I was trying to relate it like a human being, where we can say that even the evil spirit may not be right, because they may also have the feeling of uh, good intention. You know, uh, trying to uh, make others happy. But then we do have a belief in ourselves that seeing these evil spirits is bad luck. Then uh, it will cause you uh, trouble, sickness, or death, or so on, uh, just as sight. So it's hard to overcome. Uh, can you please throw some light on me? 
You see, this problem of uh, evil spirit has to do with our not able to understand the self. writing down this and come back. You see, we, if we understand this, you know, the coexistence of self and the body as the human being, and if we understand the self you know, properly, then we can see that anything which has to do with the self is continuous in nature, and anything which has to do with the body is temporary in nature. So, if we can see that and experience it ourselves, then we can see that there is continuity you know, in the self and there is temporality in the self. So, this understanding is uh, what is required. Okay. And if I can see this, then I can be sure that the body, which is temporary in nature, has taken birth, it is growing, right? It will die. That's it's the very nature of it. And the self has this nature of continuity, so it continues. Okay. Even now, as I mentioned, the only <coughs> transaction which is taking place between the self and the body <coughs> is in the form of information. <coughs> so, no physical transaction is taking place. And you can also see that even if they are not <coughs> making this transaction with the body, right, your being is still there. Right? For example, if you, when you fall sick, mm -hmm. okay, the body falls sick. Right? Your activity of desire, thought, expectation, does it get reduced? No. And this is the problem. You know, if you look at a small kid and an old man, right? As far as this activity of desire, thought and expectation is concerned, it is going on in both. Right? One may have a very small body, the other may have a big body, you know. Right? And because lot of ideas are coming in the child also, and it wants to do something, right? And you are not allowing it to do. <coughs> then you say this child is creating problem. Now who is creating problem? The child or you? You are not allowing him to do you know, you know, things which he wants to do. And he can't help it because a lot of this desire, thought and expressions are taking place in him, in him, right? He is getting a lot of ideas now, what to do. And you keep telling him, don't do, do this, don't do this, don't do this, right? You don't tell him what to do. So, now if we see both this self and the body separately, understand it, then you see that there is a continuity in the self and there is a temporality in the body. So this is one clarity we will have. Right? So what you call as good spirit or evil spirit right, has to do with this fact that right, if the body has died, right, then this self will continue Right. If it had right understanding and right feeling, 
head, it will do good when it is with body. So we are calling him as you know godly people. Eh? When it does not, it is not associated with the body. It will still have that right and standing and right feeling, and think of good of the other. On the other hand, we have lot of people.